Don't think. Feel. It is like a finger pointing away to the moon. Don't concentrate on the finger, or you will miss all that heavenly glory. In the past, hearing philosophical words from a martial arts film was unheard of. Typically, martial arts films aim to entertain rather than convey a message. Moreover, having someone of Asian descent in the lead role in Hollywood was unprecedented. Bruce Lee changed many things. In Hollywood, often not appearing too masculine, Bruce Lee reconstructed the Asian perception typically used as a comedic element with his masculine charisma. He innovatively created films with the connection he established between martial arts and philosophy, using them not only for entertainment but also for a kind of education. He was many things himself, an actor, a martial artist, a teacher. But in this video, he is a philosopher. Bruce Lee, who spent his early years in Hong Kong, often found himself in fights at school. With numerous complaints from his neighborhood about his behavior, he realized that simply being in charge wouldn't benefit him. At the age of 18, he migrated from China to America for his education. Here, through the philosophy courses he took at university, he got acquainted with Western philosophers. Simultaneously, he maintained his connection to the profound philosophy that was influential in his place of origin. Bruce Lee, who had a special interest in Eastern philosophy, also attempted to establish connections between Eastern and Western philosophies, and he began keeping his own special notes. Carrying a small notebook with him, Bruce Lee wrote about what he would do in the future and how he would express himself to the world. His goals for the future were articulated in such sharp language that his confidence was easily noticeable. In fact, a letter he wrote to a friend when he was 21 years old clearly demonstrates his self-confidence, I feel I have great creative and spiritual power within me, a power so great that it transcends ambition, faith, and vision combined. I am mesmerized by this power that my mind holds in my hand. Bruce Lee continued to read and write, maintaining his interest in and dedication to the arts. In addition to teaching martial arts to people, Bruce Lee further developed himself by training under the esteemed master of the time, Yip Man. In short, at an interestingly young age, Bruce was meticulously weaving his own philosophy, and these notes tell a story of how one's philosophy will significantly influence him. Bruce Lee one day is working on meditation with his master, Yip Man. However, Bruce Lee cannot concentrate no matter what he does. Upon this, Ip Man interrupts the lesson and goes to Bruce Lee, telling him to rest and that they will continue the lesson later. Angrily, Bruce Lee walks around, seeing the sea nearby and wanting to extract his anger and ambition from the sea with a punch. However, nothing happens to the water when he punches it. The water ripples slightly, but then returns to its former state without any damage from the punch. Observing this flexible and self-renewing nature of water, Bruce Lee realizes that he will apply this nature of water both to his fighting style and his philosophy of life. Empty your mind. Be formless, shapeless, like water. Now you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now water can flow, or it can crash. Be water, my friend. The metaphor is actually quite powerful in Bruce Lee's philosophy, which was heavily influenced by Taoism. To understand this, you need to leave America and go back to China again. The founder of Taoism and one of the most important representatives of Eastern philosophy, Laozi, says about water, nothing in the world is as soft and yielding as water, yet for dissolving the hard and inflexible, nothing can surpass it. The soft overcomes the hard, the gentle overcomes the rigid. At the heart of Taoism lies the idea of being flexible and adaptable rather than rigid and tense in facing life. In addition to these expressions, in the metaphor of water, there is no fixed form of water, it takes the shape of whatever you put it in. Moreover, it adapts to changes, it can solidify when the temperature drops or vaporize when it warms up. Despite its gentle nature, water can possess a destructive force when necessary. Bruce Lee embodies this form of water and adapts it to his own fighting style. Just as water has no fixed form, Bruce Lee also lacks a specific technique while fighting. What is the highest technique you hope to achieve? To have no technique. 
he emphasizes that the action of fighting should always be fluid and flowing like water. Even Bruce Lee himself, although as fluid as water, being thin, can be quite effective when power is focused. After thoroughly understanding the intricacies of martial arts, Bruce Lee developed his own martial philosophy, Jeet Kune Do. The central symbol of this system is the yin-yang symbol, which represents the core of Eastern philosophy. At its essence lies the complementary nature of opposites, even requiring each other for existence. According to the new side, everything in the universe exists with its opposite, male-female, morning-evening, water-fire. Bruce Lee incorporated the concept of yin-yang into the philosophy of Jeet Kune Do, adding arrows next to the immovable symbol to signify that opposites complement each other and can transform into one another, always in a state of flux. On the left side, it writes, the path without a path, while on the right side, it writes, limitless limit. The primary purpose of this system is to avoid unnecessary and complex movements and to simplify the martial art as much as possible. When making a move against an opponent, the shortest and most practical path is preferred. Come on, touch me. Any way you can. You see? To reach me, you must move to me. Your attack offers me an opportunity to intercept you. In this case, I'm using my longest weapon, my sidekick, against the nearest target, your kneecap. Another important point in this martial art and in Bruce Lee's philosophy is that fighting is a form of self-expression. Ultimately, martial art means honestly expressing yourself. Now, it is very difficult to do. I mean, it, it is easy for me to put on a show and be cocky yeah. and be flooded with a cocky feeling and then yeah. feel like pretty cool and all that. Or I can f make all kinds of phony things, you see what I mean? Blinded by it. Or I can show you some f really fancy movement. But to express oneself honestly, not lying to oneself, and to express myself honestly, that, my friend, is <laughs> very hard to do. And you have to train. You have to keep your reflexes so that when you want it, it's there. Let's think about this statement for a moment. According to Bruce Lee, the concept of expressing oneself is not exclusive to activities such as writing, making music, or drawing. Even one's fighting style can be a form of expressing emotions. Sometimes, a person expresses their anger through fighting, while another might express their determination. Just as a writer uses a pen or a musician uses an instrument as a means of self-expression, a martial artist uses their body when expressing themselves. This is because martial arts require instinct and creativity rather than being merely mechanical and soulless actions. Perhaps this is why it's called martial arts, Bruce Lee argues that for a martial artist to be able to express themselves and transform creatively by using their instincts, they need to transcend the thought process and focus on feeling. He believes that it's necessary to feel rather than think. During combat, thinking won't compare and develop a person as reflexes require. Instead, one should be calm and fluid like water in response to the opponent's movements. The body will naturally respond to the opponent's moves, reacting when necessary. When the opponent expands, I contract. When he contracts, I expand. And when there is an opportunity, I do not hit. It hits all by itself. What are the plans for his life for Bruce Lee? who has faced unfortunate events such as racism and injury in the past and managed to somehow overcome them. So, what should one do when inevitable death knocks on the door early? You want to learn the way to win, but never to accept the way to lose. To accept defeat, to learn to die is to be liberated from it. So when tomorrow comes, you must free your ambitious mind and learn the art of dying. When Bruce Lee died, he was only 32 years old, and one can't help but wonder what more he would have accomplished if he hadn't passed away so early. But even his death questions the concept of death itself. Nearly 50 years after his death, if we're still talking about Bruce Lee and if his films and philosophy continue to weave into our lives through popular culture elements like movies, comic books, games, animations, then saying his dead loses its meaning, and he himself wrote about death in this way. I still don't know what death means. 
but I'm not afraid of death, and I am the evolving Bruce Lee who constantly moves forward. If one day I die without completing my goals, I won't have any regrets. I've done what I wanted to do, and in doing so, I've been honest and have tried my best to use my skills. What more can you expect from life?